Hello, Aussies worldwide. I'm Dave Kessler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. I uh, had a request here from uh, Dave Crowder, W5FYR, who has got an ICOM 7300 and has got this same amplifier that I've got. This is the Ameritron ALS 500M and he's got the same power supply that I have here which is a 75 amp power supply big hairy power supply that can supply the what's needed for this thing right here so he wants to know all the different things that you would put in place and what has to be done to connect it I'm gonna generalize a little bit here and I'm going to not talk about amplifiers that, like, if you buy an ICOM radio, you buy an ICOM amplifier. They've got special connections so they can talk to each other. But uh, if you've got an aftermarket amplifier of any kind and the radio, there's some connections that you need to keep in mind and an order in which things need to happen. So let's take a look at the whiteboard. And... We have your radio. Okay. Radio. And then there's a coax cable that goes to the amp. Coax. And then a coax cable that might go through a tuner. Okay, this is 50 ohms, this is 50 ohms, so you're fine there. Older tube amps, that's not always true, and you might need a little tuner here, but uh, all the newer amps, you've got this, and then this, of course, goes to the antenna. Okay, now there are two other connections here. There's a connection here that's usually labeled TX on the back of the radio, and on the back of the amp is similarly labeled TX. Okay, what this does is when the radio wants to transmit, it grounds this, and that tells the amplifier that you're ready to transmit. It does not know that unless you put this in here. When it is not transmitting, it's in bypass, and that coax is connected straight through. So if you transmit without this line, the amp won't turn on. It'll just be in bypass. Now there's another connection on most amps. Right here. And this is a very, very important one. And it's called ALC. ALC. Now the amplifier that I just showed you doesn't use this one. Now the amplifier can do full amplification without the radio going all the way to 100 watts. On my amplifier, I can get full 500 watt output with 62 watts out, 62 watts out from the radio, okay? And there's no ALC, so I have to manually set it to 62 watts. What an ALC does is the amp is if it's getting too much power, it sends feedback through the ALC over to here, and this reduces the power out of the radio. Okay? So these are the three connectors to tell it you're transmitting, for this for the amp to tell the radio to back off, and of course your coax for the main signal. Now, it may seem surprising to you that you actually have to send 62 watts out to the amplifier. What happens to that 62 watts? Well, it's converted into heat <laughs> coming up out of here. Some of it may find its way out, okay? Now, the tuner, um, normally, if you have a tuner out here, it's got to be able to handle the power. And you generally want to get a tuner that can handle more than the rated power output because you get standing waves over here that can be up to double what the power is over here. Now, 
a number of the manufacturers, including MFJ, sell tuners made specifically for this amp. I think I would get a bigger, tougher tuner. Okay, now, uh, if you need to tune up a manual tuner, and you can get some pretty hefty big tuners, tune up the tuner with the amp off. Remember, this is a straight through when the amp is off. The tuner does not need full power to tune. In fact, 25 watts or something like that will tune that tuner. Once you have the tuner tuned, then turn the power on to the amplifier. Don't try to tune using the amp because the tuner can go wacko and the amp can go wacko if things are badly out of tune here. Just use some power out of the radio straight through the amp to this tuner and then turn on the amp. Now, if the ALC line becomes disconnected, you will note that the power out on your radio will jump up to the full amount. Okay, that's not necessarily good for the amp, so keep an eye on that. If the transmit becomes disconnected, it won't go into transmit, it won't amplify, it'll just do a straight through. So you'll be able to communicate, but you won't have the power uh, that you wanted to have. By the way, this coax is only carrying 100 watts. It's not very long. RG8X is fine cable for that. This right here, now we're starting uh, to carry some power. So uh, RG213LMR. 400 something like that uh, is appropriate for cables over here and out to the antenna make sure that your antenna can withstand the power too there are a lot of antennas sold that max out at like 300 watts or something like that okay i think that answers the questions that we have here so there you have it i would like to say a special thank you to samuel Suisa, who is a recently joined patron on my Patreon. You too can become a patron of this channel by going to patreon.com slash ke0og and pick whatever version of a patronage works for you. And thank you for becoming a patron or putting a tip in the tip jar or doing recurring tips because that helps me fund this channel and all of the various associated activities. And right now my assistant is holding the camera and we all want to pay him for doing that. So, until we next meet, 73.